ओम बोल भुव स्व तुप सवितुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो दिवशो यो न प्रचोदया शांति 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 नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स दिस इज वीडियो नंबर ट्वेंटी सेवन इट स्टार्ट विथ टॉक नंबर फोर हंड्रेड टू so talk number 402 while speaking of the brain and the heart sri bhagwan recalled an incident of old days as follows kavya kantha ganpati kavya kantha ganpati muni once argued that the brain was the most important center and sri bhagwan maintained that the heart was even more so there were others watching the discourse a few days after sri bhagwan received a letter containing a short poem in english on that discourse from a young boy and as arunachalam who had not yet matriculated that poem is remarkable for its poetic imagination sri bhagwan kavakantha and the assemblies of other persons are represented as the heart the brain and the body respectively and again as the sun the moon and the earth also the light from the sun is reflected on the moon and the earth is illumined similarly the brain acts by consciousness derived from the heart and the body is thus protected This teaching of Sri Bhagwan is found in Ramana Gita also. The heart is the most important center from which vitality and light radiates to the brain thus enabling it to function. The vasanas are enclosed in the heart in their subtlest form later flowing to the brain which reflects them highly magnified corresponding to a cinema show at every stage that is how the world is said to be nothing more than a cinema show sri bhagwan also added what the vasanas in the brain instead of in the heart they must be extinguished if the head is cut off so that reincarnation will be at an end but it is not so the self obviously safeguards the vasanas in its closest proximity that is within itself in the heart just as a miser keeps his most valued possessions a treasure with himself and never out of contact as the place where the vasanas are is the self there is the heart and not the brain which is only the theater for the play of the vasanas from the green house of the heart 17th april 1937 talk number 403 there was some reference to the extract from the modern psychological review wondering if any instruments could be of use in detecting the heart center and if proper subjects were available for recording the experience of the adepts in the spiritual path and so on others were speaking sri bhagwan said in the incident mentioned in the book self realization that i became unconscious and symptoms of death supervened i was all along aware i could feel the action of the physical heart stopped and equally the action of the heart center unimpaired 
This date lasted about a quarter of an hour. We asked if it was true that some disciples have had the privilege of feeling Sri Bhagwan's heart center to be on the right by placing their hands on Sri Bhagwan's chest. Sri Bhagwan said, Yes, Mr. Vishwanath Ayer, Narayana, Reddy and others have said they felt Sri Bhagwan's heart center to be on the right by placing their hands on his chest. A devotee rightly observed that if hands could feel and locate the heart center, delicate scientific instruments should certainly do it. Devotee, the heart is said to be on the right, on the left or in the center. With such differences of opinion, how are we to meditate on here they are? Mercy, you are and it is a fact. Dhyana is by you, of you and in you. It must go on where you are. It cannot be outside you. So you are the center of Dhyana and that is the heart. A location is however given to it with reference to the body. You know that you are. Where are you? You are in the body and not out of it. Yet not the whole body. Though you pervade the whole body, still you admit of a center where from all your thoughts start and wherein they subside. Even when the limbs are empty, Amputated, 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 you are there but with the defective senses. So a center must be admitted. That is called the heart. The heart is not merely the center but the self. Heart is only another name for the self. Doubts arise only when you identify it with something tangible and physical. The scriptures no doubt describe it as the source of 101 nadis, etc. In the Yoga Vasistha, Chodala says that Kundalini is composed of 101 nadis, thus identifying one with the other. Heart is no conception, no object for meditation. But it is the seat of meditation. The self remains all alone. You see the body in the heart, the world in it. There is nothing separate from it. So all kinds of effort are located there only. 18th April 1937, talk number 404. A casual visitor asked what is Nistha, how is the look to be directed between the eyebrows? Mercy, how do, you, how do we see these things? There is a light by which these are seen. Your question amounts to asking how that light is seen. Devotee, what is the significance of the spot between the eyebrows? Mercy, that is mentioned as if, if to say do not see with your eyes. Devotee, what is the regulation of breath for? Maharishi, only to control the mind. Again, after a few minutes, Sri Bhagwan continued. The mind functions both as light and as objects. If divested of things, the light alone will remain over. Devotee, but we must know that there is such light. Maharishi, Sight or cognition is impossible without such light. How do you cognize anything in sleep? Our cognition pertains to the present state because there is light. Light is the essential requisite for sight. It is plain in our daily life. Among the lights, sunlight is the most important. Hence they speak of the glory of millions of suns. Devotee, there is light if we press the eyelids with our fingers. Another quest questioner, what is the use of seeing such a light, Maharishi? It is done lest we forget the goal. The practice helps one not to divert the attention to other pursuits.
द ऑब्जेक्ट इज सीन और द लाइट इज रिकोगनाइज बिकॉज देर इज द सब्जेक्ट टू डू सो हाउ डज इट एफेक्ट द सब्जेक्ट वेदर द ऑब्जेक्ट आर सीन और नॉट If the light that is the cognizer or the consciousness is seen, there will be no object to be seen. Pure light that is consciousness will alone remain over. Duty. Why then is the regulation of breath necessary? Maharishi, control of breath or its regulation is only for controlling the mind, so that the mind may not wander away. Duty. Is it for control of mind only? Mercy. It is not enough that light is seen. It is also necessary to have the mind engaged in a single activity. That is, for example, the elephant trunk and the chain. Duty. How long will it take for one to gain chintamani, the celestial gem, granting all the wishes of its owner? Mercy. The example of Chintamani is found in Yoga Vasistha. Chintamani signifies the real nature of the self. The story is as follows. A man was making tapasya for gaining Chintamani. A gem mysteriously fell into his hands. He thought that it could not be Chintamani because his efforts had been too short and too little to gain the gem. He discarded it and continued the tapas. Later, a sadhu placed before him a brilliant pebble with facets cut. The man was taken in by its appearance but found that it could not fulfill his desire as he originally supposed. Similarly, the self being inherent should not be sought for elsewhere. Again, an ant elephant used to be often teased by its keeper. He once had an accident and fell down. The elephant could have killed him on the spot but did not do so. Later, however, the keeper dug a big pit in the forest and killed the elephant. Sudala illustrated Sikhi Dhavjal's error by the story. He had Varagya even while ruling his kingdom and could have realized the self if only he had pursued his Varagya to the point of killing the ego. He did not do it but came to the forest, had a timetable of tapas and yet did not improve even after 18 years of tapas he had made himself a victim of his own creation chudala advised him to give up the ego and realize the self which he did and was liberated it is clear from chudala's story that varage accompanied by ego is of no value whereas all possessions in the absence of ego do not matter 19th April 1937, talk number 405. A respectable and orthodox gentleman asked about Sri Chakra. Mercy, it has a deep significance. There are 43 corners with sacred syllables in them. Its worship is a method for concentration of mind. The mind is wont to move externally, it must be checked and turned within. Its habit is to dwell on names and forms for all external objects possess names and forms. Such names and forms are made symbolic mental conceptions in order to divert the mind from external objects and make it dwell within itself. The idols, mantras, yantras are all meant to give food to the mind in its introvert state so that it may later become capable of being concentrated. After which the superb state is reached automatically. 
ट्वेंटियथ अप्रैल 1937 टॉक नंबर 406 मिस्टर कोहन ए रेजिडेंट डिसाइपल हैज बीन फॉर सम डेज पास्ट थिंकिंग अबाउट ए बुक कॉल्ड निर्वाणा रिटन बाय ए प्रोमिनेंट थियोसोफिस्ट वेयर इन द author claims to reach nirvana every night after going to sleep he claims to see his own master and other masters of the theosophical society as bright lights within the ocean of light which is nirvana he asked sri bhagwan how it could be possible considering the advaitic teaching that the nirvanic experience is the same as that of the pure consciousness of being Mahirshi Nirvana is perfection in the perfect state there is neither subject nor object there is nothing to see nothing to feel nothing to know seeing and knowing are the functions of the mind in nirvana there is nothing but the blissful pure consciousness i am dude how then can a prominent ts leader who claims the clear voice of a high order praises the author for his supposed correct and vivid description of nirvana and why is the t society so much obsessed by the idea of service mercy well theosophy and other kindled movements are good in as much as they make a man unselfish and prepare him for the highest truth service like prayers tapas and even business done in god's name led the highest goal self realization duty but after how long and why should a man who is ready for the absolute knowledge stick to the knowledge of the relativity relative Maharishi, everything happens in its own time. The one who is ready for the absolute knowledge will be made somehow to hear of it and follow it up. He will realize that Atam Vidya is the highest of all virtues and also the end of the journey. Then asked about the difference between external and internal nirvikalpa samadhi is referring to article 391 above the master said external samadhi is holding on to the reality while witnessing the world without reacting to it from within there is the stillness of a viveless ocean the internal samadhi involves loss of body consciousness devoti is loss of body consciousness a prerequisite to the attainment of sahaja samadhi maharshi what is body consciousness analyze it there must be a body and consciousness limited to it which together make up body consciousness these must lie in another consciousness which is absolute and unaffected hold it that is samadhi it exists when there is no body consciousness because it transcends the latter it also exists when there is the body consciousness so it is always there what does it matter whether body consciousness is lost or retained when lost it is internal samadhi when retained it is external samadhi that's all a person must remain in any of the six samadhi so that sahaja samadhi may be easy for him duty the mind does not sink into that state even for a second mercy a strong conviction is necessary that in the self transcending the mind and the phenomena devotee nevertheless the mind proves to be a cord against attempts to sink it mercy what does it matter if the mind is active if it is so only on the substratum of the self hold the self even during mental activities devotee i cannot go within sufficiently deep
Mahersi, it is wrong to say so. Where are you now? If not in the self, where should you go? All that is necessary is the stern belief that you are the self. Say rather that the other activity is through a will on you. Devotee, yes, it is so. Maharishi, that means that the conviction is weak. Devotee, I understand that the I is only artificial. Kirtrima, my attempts at realizing the real I are unavailing because the artificial I is brought into action for realizing the other. Maharishi Viveka Chubra Muni makes it clear that the artificial eye of the Vijnana Kosa is a projection and though it must look to the significance vacha of I, the true principle. So, I end this video here. Next video number 28 will start with talk number 407. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Please like, comment and share the video and subscribe the channel. Namaskar my dear friends. Namaskar.